just have it ready, you know, <clears throat> and show it to everybody. I think, you know, register it with the guild, pay the 20 bucks, it's worth it because you can get really screwed later. Um, and then if the, if the location manager wants to see it, let him read it because someday that location manager is going to be producing because no, there, I don't want to say nobody wants to be where they're at, but so many people don't want to be where they're at and there are people who are going to go up the ladder and they can help you later. So don't forget the PA who's unloading, you know, Diet Cokes into the thing because in my case there too, somebody who was a PA, I helped him carry an ice chest once and he's like, they were all dicks to me, but you were nice. You want to direct a music video? I'm like, why? He's like, because I'm making them in Europe now. Okay. So you just get it out there. I'd say get it to everybody. We'll just go down the line, Misha. Oh, we're gonna oh, we're gonna do that. No, uh, I would say the same thing. I mean, um, my route was I paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to go to film school and got a referral from one of my teachers, luckily. Uh, but I I remember that when I was first in, when I was in high school, there was a site called Trigger Street, which you could. It was like one of the first sites you could put your your material online and get feedback. And I think that's important is getting feedback, making it as good as you can so when you get that opportunity to give it to someone that's going to read it and make a difference that it's it's the best thing that you could possibly put in their hands. Oh, well, I've got to agree with all of that. Um, <clears throat> and especially what was being said at the beginning there about you know getting things out, but both have said about getting things out widely. I wasted, I think, years just kind of being too paranoid like everybody often is, whether it's because you think things will be stolen or just because you feel like it's not ready. Um, and I don't think that's worth really fearing about. Um, I guess the one spin I would throw on this would be to almost question the premise in a way, which would be to say, if that's you out there, the person we're describing, who's trying to get that first script out there, and it's a horror script, my question would be, what do you really want? <coughs> you know, if you're really a writer, even a great horror writer, but, but writing is what it's really about, I'd almost say, don't, you know, do it differently and write something differently because and it's something we can come back to. I think <clears throat> the fate of pure writing within this genre is, is very bad. <clears throat> right? It's very hard. There was an era when just having written some terrific horror movies, a guy like Aaron, Kru Aaron Kruger or some other people I can think of who did terrific work and got lots of great work from having written a horror movie. But in general, I, I don't think that people look to the writers of horror movies, unfortunately, uh, even successful ones, to then advance. So versus if what you are as a filmmaker, purely, you want to make the movie, you've written it to make it, well, that's a whole other matter. Then you're alive in probably the best time ever to just go try to make your horror movie, just try to do it. But again, <clears throat> I think if it's uh, about the pure writing, I don't disregard the film school. You're the peers you get from film school, the yeah. teachers and the recommendations is huge. Um, and we also exist now with there's hold your mic the a little closer the blood list and the Nichols Fellowship. There's so many opportunities to get scripts read and talked about, and there's this whole world on the internet of things like the blood list and the blacklist and all the various lists out there. So that it's almost now that having a well talked about unproduced script is a is a is a terrific thing. I just would say be careful because, like I say, in a way, horror is such a genre genre. <laughs> It's so based on its rules and its own formulations and things that often, even the best horror movies, you don't hear people often talking about the screenplays or talking about the writing of them in part because it's almost taken for granted and tends to be talked about in terms of the direction or other elements of it. So, you know, uh, be careful. <laughs> I think just from my perspective, uh, I can't stress the value of writing uh, a script for what your situation currently kind of permits. So, I mean, you know, case in point for Ritual, it's it was very easy to kind of write something for very cheap and then it was easier to say, I'm going to make this movie and I'm going to make it now and I just need a little bit of money. Because as soon as you start telling people that you're going to go and make a film, then people start taking you a little bit more seriously. And if you can say that I can get this film done quickly and I can get it done for much less money than, you know, a $5 million epic where I'm going to destroy a, a fucking haunted mansion, then uh, it's much easier to do so, I think. Um, that's just from, you know, what, uh, what happened with us. And, um, you know, the other thing I think that's very important was my first job was as a script reader. And nothing is more of a necessity, I feel like, than reading thousands of just terrible scripts that are submitted every single day. Because, you know, you get to learn a pattern and you get to learn where you start to zone out and your coverage or whatever and your comments truly, you know, uh, 
they help that and they, they really kind of represent that you understand, you know, how to kind of tell a streamlined or, you know, effective story and, you know, that not only helps, but if you write enough coverage, you write enough effective coverage, people start to take notice and they realize that if you want to be a writer, then, you know, maybe you know a little bit more than, uh, than you know, all these people who just haphazardly throw their scripts and, at production companies and hope that it pans out. Yeah, I pretty much agree with everything they said. Um, don't be precious with them. I mean, if you can get somebody who is an ally for you, come to these types of things and meet people who want to work with you and make friends and get someone to be an ally because there's nothing more, um, I guess, uh, heartening than when you are out there, you're trying to get something read and you maybe can't find someone, but you have that one person who, who's a champion for you and you can kind of fall back on them. But don't be precious with it. Get people to read your script and, and get feedback on it. And I think the most important thing, at least for me, and maybe you don't have aspirations to direct, but like, I think making your content. Because ultimately, especially with the way the industry is now, you can't really rely on the, the standard machine. So if you have a great idea and you've written a feature length script and you're excited about it, write a short or turn it into a short or find a piece about that story that you think you can tell in two or three minutes and then figure out a way to get that shot because maybe someone won't watch your or read your script because it's a couple hundred pages long or 120 pages long, but they certainly will watch two minutes of something that's really compelling. Figure out a way to get it on, on screen and get it watched. <laughs>